All right, so to get things started here, I just want to make sure everybody's on the same page. So we should have created a folder, and that folder could be named whatever you want. It's just for contents for this course. So I've called mine JavaScript course. So you want to go up here to File, and then you want to go to Open Folder, and you want to select the location of that folder on your computer. So once you've done that, you want to go over to this Explore icon. You want to click on that, and it should show you that you're inside of this folder, and you want to click on this guy right here, which is for a new file, okay? This is for a new folder, so you want new file, the one all the way to the left right here. So click on that, and then you're going to name a new file, something we're going to work with for a little while. I'm going to call this Basics dot js okay so basics dot js everything's lowercase you can call this file whatever you want just make sure you end it with dot js so that visual studio code knows you're working with a javascript file so now i'm going to minimize this so i can hit this button here or if you're on windows you can use control b to open and close this guy really quickly now if you're on a mac the shortcut is displayed if you hover over this guy and i know the shortcut there says control plus shift plus e that's a different shortcut Okay, so there's multiple ones. So I'm going to hit Control B to minimize this. And now let's talk about values and variables in JavaScript. So we're going to keep this lesson very, very simple for now because we're just getting started. So a value in JavaScript is just a piece of data. So again, to keep things simple, what I'm going to do as a piece of data, I'm just going to type out my name inside of double quotes. So just jump. So we have different data types and we'll learn more about the data types as we progress through the course. But right now, when you wrap a piece of text inside of double quotes or single quotes or back ticks, this is going to be known as a string. Okay. So you could do it like this or like this or with these back ticks like this. Okay. So these are all representing strings. So just the value of John. Okay. That's what I'm telling JavaScript that I have. Now, another value, you could use something like a number, okay? And if we type out a number here, we want it to be a number, then we don't use any type of quotes, okay? So just the number 21. Notice that these guys are different colors. So 21, which is a number, is purple. And then John, in each case, is a string, okay? So it's highlighted with yellow. Now, if I surrounded the number 21 with quotes, well, now JavaScript's going to treat this as a string. Okay, so now that we understand that each one of these guys represents a value, and you can change this up. You could say something like, this is Bob, and let's say this is Mary, just to use different names here. We're going to use something known as the console.log statement. Okay, this is built into JavaScript to view some simple output in our terminal. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the multi-line selection, which is built into VS Code. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key, okay, on Windows, and I'm going to keep pressing with my mouse on each line, and you're going to see that a big, long cursor appears, okay? So this is going to allow me to change multiple lines at once without going through and typing and typing and typing, okay? So it allows me to do that there, but because these guys are different lengths, I have to close them out individually, okay? So that's a bit annoying, but that's okay. So we'll go ahead and do this. So now what's going to happen is when I run my program in the terminal, I'm going to see John, Bob, Mary, 21 as a number, and then 21 as a string. Okay. So you'll see that the terminal is actually going to highlight these differently as well. So let's go ahead and open the terminal. So I'm just going to do this without the shortcut one last time. So I'm going to hit new terminal here. The shortcut for all these things, if you see me doing something really quickly with my keyboard, I'm just going right here, which is the shortcut. So control plus shift plus this back tick character. Okay. So you want to hit that. And then I'm going to type clear here. Okay. And then to run your program, what you want to do is type node. Okay. Then a space and then the name of the program. Okay. So what I'm running here is basics.js. If you don't type this correctly, you will get an error. Okay. And it's very frustrating when you first start when you're making typos, but you've got to type it exactly as I'm typing it. So node space, my file name is going to be basics.js. So that's what I'm typing. So go ahead and hit enter. Okay. And you're going to get your output there. So what we see is we have John, we have Bob, we have Mary, we have the number 21. Notice it's highlighted different. And then we have 21 as a string. So if you go back up here, again, it's in the order that's given. So John, Bob, Mary, 21 is a number, 21 is a string. John, Bob, Mary, 21 is a number, 21 is a string. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just clear this out and I'm going to close my terminal for now. 
All right, so what I want to do now is talk about the concept of a variable in JavaScript. So a variable, you can think about this as like a box or some sort of container where using a variable to store values is going to allow us to reuse the value over and over and over again in our program. So we just keep going back to the box and pulling that value out every time we need it. So this is helpful for us because if we need to change a value in multiple places in our program, using a variable will allow us to simply change the value in one place versus all that typing and aggravation of changing it in many, many places. So in JavaScript, there's going to be three ways that we declare a variable. We can use let, we can use const, and we can use var. So for this lesson, I'm just going to use the keyword let, okay, and we'll cover the other two shortly. All right, so what I'm going to do is just delete this real quick. I'm going to make a little comment here. So a comment is going to be something that's not read by your program. Okay. So I'm going to put two forward slashes. This is for a single line comment. Okay. And I'm just going to say declaring a variable like this. Okay. And you don't need to do anything else. So this will not be read by your program. Okay. So it's just something that's there for you to reference later on. Maybe you're going to come back to your program six months from now and you want to remember what you were thinking. So I'm going to use let to declare a variable. So I'm going to type the keyword let, okay, followed by the variable name. Now there are certain things that you can name a variable and certain things that you can't name a variable. So you can't use a reserved keyword. For example, I can't put let function and then say this is equal to, let's say John. Okay, that's not going to work. What I need is a variable name that's going to start with a letter, a dollar sign, or an underscore. And I can't have anything other than a letter, a number, a dollar sign, or an underscore in this guy. Okay, so I can put numbers in the variable name, but it can't start with a number. So if I wanted to do something like first name, okay, like this, well, that's okay. But if I try to put a number in the front, let's say I put three, that's going to give me an error. Okay, so if you get something highlighting red, it depends on the theme you're using, but if it gets something highlighting red, it's telling you have some sort of error, you need to pay attention to that. So when you first start out, you might try to name something illegally, okay, and you'll get a syntax error if you try to run that. So I've called my variable name first name, and notice how this first letter of the first word is lowercase, but the first letter of the second word is uppercase. So this is called the camel case notation. So let's say I had three words here. Let's say I put my first name. Well, now I would want to capitalize that F. So for the first letter of the first word, it's lowercase, okay? For the first letter of each additional word, it's uppercase. And then all the other letters are going to be lowercase. So this is the camel case notation. It's pretty standard in JavaScript. You want to understand this is how we do things so that when you're coming across code and when you're writing code yourself, you can adopt the standard. Okay, so let's go ahead and come over here. And I want you to notice that you have an equal sign. So in JavaScript, this is called the assignment operator. So this is going to assign the value here, which in this case is John, to this variable, my first name. Okay, so notice that this is surrounded by quotes. So this is telling me it's going to be a string. And I've finished this off with a semicolon. Now, you don't have to do this. The program will just run fine if I get rid of my semicolon but I like to put the semicolons in just for clarity, okay? So I'm going to save this, and what I wanna do is console.log. So now instead of console.logging John, okay, what I can do, I can console.log this guy my first name, okay? And I'm gonna put semicolons on each one to stay consistent. And I'm gonna pop open my terminal now. Let's go ahead and pull this up here. So I'm going to clear this. Remember, you can use your up and down arrows to cycle through commands. And I'm going to run this and I get John and John again. Okay, so if we close this, where did that come from? The first one came from this. I'm just console.logging the value John. And the second one came from this. I'm console.logging the value John, but it's first going to my first name. Okay, and it's thinking about, okay, well, what's stored in there? Well, it's this string John. If I change this to, let's say, Mary, and I misspelled that, Okay, and I open my terminal again, I clear this and run this, I get John and John, and that's because I didn't save my program. So let's go back up here and save this. So let's try that again, clear this and run this. We get John and then Mary, okay? So you can imagine how advantageous it is to use a variable because, see, we had to change the name here. So if I had console.log all these different names, let's say I had 5,000 of them, okay? Well, if I had to go and change that 5,000 times, that'd be really annoying. 
But if I just reference the variable name, well, now I can just change it in one place, right? So for example, I can just do this multiple times. And if I open my console up and run through this, well, now I get all these ones. So if I go back here and let's say I change this from Mary to, I don't know, let's say Steve, for example, and let's save this, pull this back up here and clear this and run this. Well, now you see it changed it everywhere, right? I didn't have to go back and say, update the text for Steve each time. Okay, I know this is a very simple example, but you can see that if you were using this on a massive program where you were referencing this person's first name, that it would be much more useful to have this stored as a variable in case it changed later.